Happy New Year, everybody. And I'm telling you right now, take advantage of this deck before people learn how to play around it. Mysteria is not the only toy on the block that you can play with. The ability to get even more golems out with Mr. Bertrand's Mysterian Circle. Not only that, the fact that Mr. Bertrand is two spell boosts for air means that the win condition of spamming golem lords to deal massive damage based on how many golems you summon and then resummoning golem lords with air for even more damage. That game plan is an absolute go. If that wasn't enough, the new summoning disaster also summons a clay golem and a sediment, increasing your count even more. And then other than that, you just play the good earthright and spell boost cards to draw into that combo. Familiar's Pact always pulls golem lords, so it's always nice to keep that. Keeping air in the early game is nice as well, so you have that insurance, you're gonna have more golem lords in the back. In this play style, accelerating the golem lord spell is better than it is usually in regular earthright. Adds to your count and adds to your spell boost. And the fact that golem lord fanfare can clear wide boards is super important in this current meta. What with Rally Sword, Last Word Shadow, and Mysteria Rune running around. It's going pretty well. I feel like the only matchup I struggled with was Dragon. Mostly because they just rolled double ramp or something. <laughs> if somebody has advice for that one, let me know. So yeah, let's get into the games. So first, make sure to like the video and subscribe. It really, really does help out. Well, first of all, Happy New Year 2024. Hopefully, it'll be a great year for everyone. Uh, and I really want to say thank you for a great 2023. And I'm super grateful to all of you for letting me do this as a job and hopefully this year is even better now we start with the familiars pact and a familiar matchup uh this is mysteria runecraft now i want to say that i actually did play these games on stream but for some reason my internet was like really bad today and my stream kept stuttering and dying i don't know what was going on so <laughs> Are the internet tubes having some kind of Y2K-esque meltdown? I don't know, but I did play this on stream, but I'm still going over it and doing post commentary anyway, because I don't know if that footage is usable given the, the stuttering problems I had. Anyway, opened with spamming golems. I even played out the command spell just for a body and a sediment. Now it's super important in this matchup against Mysteria to have two sediments always for your turn five golem lord because if they just spam out a bunch of guys like they want to do with their stupid book and their wormist and their worms or whatever you want to be able to clear it i mean I, this can clear the amaryllis too now right so it is actually important and um uh oh yeah that happened <laughs> Okay, so in this instance, it wasn't that important. I forgot that happened. I just also want to say, by the way, uh, I did not sleep last night, so I am actually operating on zero hours of sleep because they were firing fireworks off until like 2 a.m. in the morning. So, <laughs> in fact, I even heard fireworks walking home from dinner today. So, they're still going. <laughs> anyway. Here I was really worried because the pre-evolved Golem Lord is really good against Mysteria because their only out against that is to evolve the book and banish it. But for some reason, this guy didn't do that. And so I basically just take a free win. Now you might be screaming paid actor. And yeah, this was kind of a ridiculous play on their part. But I think people just aren't used to this deck on ladder yet, and look how much burst damage can actually do if it's left unattended. Here's another game against Mysteria, so you can get another look. I'm batting a pretty good average against Mysteria with this deck, honestly. I think the Golem Lord is super strong into it. I think Mysteria, if they high roll, can still absolutely destroy you, especially if they get a full board up before you can Golem Lord to clear it and they actually get all that damage in. You're screwed, right? Like that that high roll, I don't think I don't know if anything can beat that. But, uh, other than that, um, yeah, you 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 do have quite a bit of game against the meta game, as I said with this deck earlier. The only one, dragon, a bit of a problem. Now I start off here. I have the Golden Lord in hand, which I'm happy about. Always being mindful, always being mindful about how I'm gonna end up having two stacks on the turn five. Like I said in the last game where it didn't end up mattering, but it will end up mattering, believe me, okay? So, using the augmentation because my hand is garbage, 
and uh, getting a body out, no worries. Now that I have summoning a disaster and multi-elemental neophyte, I see a path to getting two uh, 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 sediments out for the turn five. So we'll just spam the bodies out here. There you go. We even fates hand. We even fates hand again and trade these guys and another neophyte for good measure just in case if they clear the board or if they banish one with a book i'll still have two for a golem lord right if they banish one with a book that would be a problem if i didn't have the second one to still have my golem lord active for this turn that they're flooding the board with which is exactly what they did okay so. <laughs> I actually, you know, I know that the problem card is Hannah. I know that the problem card is Wormist. I get it. I get it. I get it. I get it. But I hate that book, man. I just don't. I don't like it. Why do they get unconditional banish? Anyway, here's where I smelt weakness in the water. And obviously this could end up biting me in the butt, right? But I said, listen, you used your book, kid. What are the odds you have another book? And it, they didn't have it. <laughs> it felt so good. But you know, that might have been an example of uh, people just not knowing how to play around the deck yet, not saving their little book for my golem pre-evolve, right? So let's fight against an opponent that we know is at least competent, okay? College Cup champion, JCG entrant. Let's get into it, okay? Start off with the Familiar's Pack. Get the Golem Lord in hand. Here, I'm pretty sure I just play Summoning Disaster. Yep. New card played. Put it in the thumbnail, baby. Uh, and that just gives me a Golem Count and more Sediments. Now, I do have the Celestial Command in hand for even more guys. I think I do just end up playing two Golem Lords here. <laughs> Even though I have nothing to boost. Just because getting the bodies out is important. Not only for your win con, but also to just contend on board and give them pressure in the early game. You know what I'm saying? Otherwise, they just sort of run away with it. Uh, they end up playing the end here, and I'm like, okay, insight, draw me something good. Oh, the Outdoors Mage. That is a huge difference maker, man. That is a huge difference maker. And you see here, I play the Sweet Defender Golem for two very simple reasons. One, if I played the Golem Lord, I wouldn't have enough stacks for turn five. Two, playing the Sweet Defender Golem means that on turn five, I can play Golem Lord, and then the turn after, it'll get down to stack one. I can fuse Celestial Command to whatever I draw next, and then Golem Lord again. Double Golem Lord, it's important. My air's only at two spell boosts right now, so I'm gonna need hard cast Golem Lords to tide me over until I can start cheating them out with air, right? So first up, Golem Lord numero uno. Ba-bam, see you later. And I know I, they have evil points and they probably have the stupid book, but for some reason, I always go for the gamble. I'm like, listen, they don't have it, okay? <laughs> Every time I go for the gamble. I don't know what to tell you. It's in my blood, I think. I just love it. I live for the rush. <laughs> anyway, do they have the book? They don't have the book! <laughs> I think if this deck gets more popular, believe you me, they are gonna start keeping that book even more aggressively than they already keep it. But <laughs> they didn't get the book, baby. All right, next up is a game against Big Haven, the one that requires you to play Lina, evolve her, then play a bunch of guys and then just deal chip. It's like a control deck that beats you through attrition-based burn over many turns, right? Uh, well, they're a little slow. And one good thing about this deck is that you can get Golem Lord out pretty fast. And one very key thing to note, actually, this is actually pretty important, is that... <laughs> uh, Divine Minister has six defense. Golem Lord does five to the board on Earthrite. So it doesn't clear the ministers, meaning it doesn't run the risk of getting banished, meaning that it can still go face with the effect. 
That's a pretty big deal, actually. <laughs> and you'll find that out soon. But do I actually win? Let's let's see. They used the Prayer of Conviction on a two drop. Or a one drop, rather. It was a one cost spell that did that. I'm totally fine with that. Alright, at this point, I'm like, listen. Where's my gold? Lord. <laughs> That's okay. I can use the magical augmentation. Easy, simple, and clean. I can use the magical augmentation on whatever comes out. Here comes the Lina on the Evolve turn. I didn't play the Outdoors Mage that last turn because I just wanted to have this cake be up. I guess I could have played it before I played the cake, but that's fine. It, it does, it is nice and relevant now, right? Because now I can just use the Magical Augment uh, on the Lina and then double Outdoors Mage and that's an easy full clear. We used the Undying Witch twice for more draw because... Like I said, where's Golem Lord? <laughs> Not getting Golem Lord out on five pains me physically, I think. It doesn't feel good. Now, they are going to go all the way up to 26 defense with this Goddess of Condemnation. That's a lot of defense to chip through. And at this point, I'm feeling a little bit nervous. I'm like, am I going to be able to deal that much damage, number one? And number two... I'm also nervous about, are they going to be able to banish my Golem Lord? I know they don't have that many sources of banish, but I did see them run that two-drop spell. I was a little scared about that, but they did end up just playing Eralde. I think if this deck was more common, uh, then they probably would have saved that banish spell, I'll be honest with you. <laughs> because <laughs> I'm really taking advantage of the fact that I, I think people aren't used to this deck yet. And you know... I'm proud of that. I'll, I'll gladly take advantage of that. All right, Mr. Bertrand, come out. Mysterian Circle. All my boosts are up, baby. Golem Lord in the cut. Dealing seven damage straight to the face. There's Gilgamesh. Should have seen that one coming. That's okay. The damage has been done, and he's not getting any damage through my face. So whatever. They do go back up to 23 defense, though. And... That's scary, but I do draw the other air and I'm like, oh my god, I'm starting to see it. The end game is becoming assembled, okay? I'm ready for this. I play one command because, and get this, it's a golem. <laughs> Pretty self-explanatory gameplay from Ignidius this time. Run the air in. It does give me a damage shield and boost the other air, which is nice. Gets me another Golem Lord, potentially. Uh, if I play this game a little differently, I think I might have saved both airs for an OTK turn. Because now I run the risk of just getting uh, absolutely stalled and out healed. So I think that was a misplay on my part. If I just saved the double air for an OTK and just stalled out that turn, I think I would have been in a safer spot. But I'm saved by the bell. <laughs> I'll just be honest with you. I got bailed out there. I made a bad play. Never punished, baby. And uh, yeah, that's that's uh, that's a lot. That's a lot. Oh, the minister entered, didn't have, wait. That's a different game. <laughs> I debated you by accident. The minister was a different game. Whoops. Now we're up against Last Word Shadowcraft, the second most powerful deck by a lot of people's accounts in the current meta, or at least the second most powerful, most visible deck. All right. Uh, and I end up drawing Insight and Fate's Hand off the Mull. I was a little worried about that, but then I top decked Summoning Disaster, and I'm like, thank God, an on-curve play, all right? Worst comes to worst, I can play Summoning Disaster and then Celestial Command for the three-cost spell. Whatever. Totally fine by me. Even better, though, would be to just play Summoning Disaster again and then have hopefully have, like, a, a one-drop that I top deck. That would be great. Uh, yeah, let's try that. <laughs> that would be the ideal outcome. And we did it, boys. All right. Summoning Disaster into Neophyte. And that's for two reasons. Summoning Disaster is just way better on one than anything, I feel like. Because, like, it's just the golem. I mean, by one, I mean the first effect. And the second effect, you get a ward that's indestructible, but, like, can get effect damaged. And then on the third effect, you get a storm guy, which is pretty cool, but very late. So, yeah, I feel like playing it for two when you can is usually the right call. Uh, and, yep, making sure that I have at least two stackaroonies 
for my turn five. Now here I was actually stressed out because I was thinking they could just pass. They could just pass and stall me out and I would be screwed. I was so worried about that. But then they played Hellfire Strike <laughs> and I was like, thank you, Lord. Okay, Golem Lord out on the board. Ba -ba bam To be fair to them, I suppose, like even if they stalled me out, I could always trade one into the Amaterasu and play Golem Lord anyway. So wasn't really a bad play from them. Uh, it just meant that I got less, or I got more golems out, which is what mattered to be more than just having the board. Uh, but yeah, I would have been able to play Golem Lord anyway, really, right? Like I just trade a golem into Amaterasu, which they can't control uh, having it summoned unless they had a Night Terrors in hand for them to sit. So I can't really, can't, can't really, can't really put the blame on them for that one. That's not their fault. Okay. But anyway, Celestial Command coming in clutch, giving me an extra stackaroni for another Golem Lord, the pre-evolve. Because at this point, I'm thinking the only removal for this board through three wards is Istendet or just an unreasonable amount of rush cards. And then this happened and I was like, oh, okay. So there is an unreasonable amount of rush cards coming in. <laughs> but then it didn't. And uh, yeah, it was really relieving. And now we're up against Forest Craft. Now, Castell Forest has been ticking up in popularity recently. Not great against Mysteria Rune, but it has good matchups into uh, Last Word Shadowcraft, as far as I'm aware. So, not too surprised to see Castell on the ladder here. And I do get the Golem Lord in the opening hand and summoning disaster turn two. So at this point, I'm like, okay, I can play the Celestial Command on three if I have to. Just get a body up. They do end up playing Gale Pierce, which I found pretty interesting. Thankfully, I top decked the uh, Cake Golem. And I just went ahead and spent a Golem Lord activation to get a body while healing and Making sure, always keeping in mind, always, 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 that I have enough for Golem Lord on five. That's really important, okay? So Mr. Bertrand comes out. That's more Golem count. No air in hand does make me a little sad, I'll be honest with you. My hand is looking a little, just a little bit low on resources. So I'm like, okay, this Golem Lord is gonna come out next turn. And I swear to God, <laughs> I gotta get something down uh, the turn after off the top of the deck. And here I was super concerned because Licorice is such a good tech against Golem Lord. And if Golem Lord becomes more popular, Licorice is gonna be more used, but they didn't have a way to bounce it or bring it back, which means that my Golem Lord was able to come up uncontested. And now, since Licorice only now leaves play, only my elemental neophyte is gonna get destroyed by it. So it really doesn't matter. And I don't think they can recover from this position. Really? Verdant Lieutenant, Leaf Shade Assassin, very strange build of forest they're running here. I assume this is all text to deal with large Mysteria boards as much as possible. I commend you for your efforts, but <laughs> you still can't clear the Golem Lord, which is a common problem I'm finding with a lot of the decks on ladder right now. And to top it all off, we're gonna end with a game which had my favorite end game so far playing this deck. Definitely not one that I expected, okay? So the mulligan is insane. I keep two airs and toss a fate's hand. I guess I just had faith that I would top deck a one drop into a two drop spell or something. It is nuts. I, I, why did I do that? <laughs> anyway, it ended up working out. So I got the Mysterian Circle into turn two, which is great. And we got the Fate Sand back, so we can start boosting. Next turn, I can play Celestial Command just for three, and we'll see how it goes from there. They end up playing Twofold Grace. Out comes Tsukiyomi, going in. And now I am taking a bit of chip here. Gotta keep in mind that chip could be an issue. I do end up just playing the three drop because playing Familiar's Pact one drop is less curve efficient anyway, and having this body up will block, well, that. <laughs> 
Three defense wards I learned from a previous video where a, 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 a wind flower tiger, wind flower, wind blossom, wind blossom tiger just blocked Shadow's boards like two turns in a row or whatever. So I'm like, okay, seems good to me. <laughs> anyway. Uh, here we go again, getting a Mr. Bertrand in hand. And I, I should have saved this Fate's hand. Yep, I do. And now I just need to... Unfortunately, I don't have two stacks for the Golem Lord at this point, which makes me very nervous because that's like the biggest thing that I've been saying this whole video <laughs> to do. And I'm like, please just top deck Celestial Command. I am begging you. I am begging you. Nope. Where is it? Oh, feels bad, but that's okay. We use the Outdoors Mage to help clear up the board just a little bit. Undying Witch helping to draw a little bit as well. Uh, and there's another Undying Witch, aka Anya Forger. Get the stack count up for the next turn. Because, okay, I couldn't play the Golem Lord this turn. Bummer. But I have healing from the cake. Next turn, I can Anya, Golem Lord, and that's fine. I draw, I Golem Lord, or I can Mysterian Circle, Golem Lord, whatever the situation calls for. Like, if I want to boost my airs even more, for example, like, they're boosted 992 right now. So, I'm not too not too worried about it. <laughs> but, but, like, if I just want more damage from the body, or if I want another draw, let's figure it out, right? So... Ah, a bunch of stuff happens. <laughs> and I decided to put my Golem Lord behind three wards. The Anya Forger also not playing it, even though it would give me a draw. You know what I mean? Like, I wanted the Sweet Defender Golem to still be annoying for them. So, keeping me healed up as well. There's Valkyrie Lance, Valkyrie Lance, all this. As they try desperately to clear my board. Can they do it? Does the hit work? It does! But Golem Lord! Golem Lord is alive! Now, the only way they could clear it, and they do have a way to clear it at this point in the game, uh, or at this stage, like in this scenario, if they had the right hand. Like, if they had a one drop plus uh, apple, poisoned apple, that would have just killed my Golem Lord outright. That would have been a little sad. But actually, with the Golem Lord up, I don't have a way to cheat it out with air anymore. So then I read the card and I'm like, what? This guy summons a storm? Who is this guy? <laughs> so yeah, apparently on turn seven, you can just win that way too. I didn't know that until I played it. 